Hey guys, this is Alexander Williamson with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. So today we're going to talk about one of the most amazing, beautiful mysteries, secrets of the natural world. And that is, how do fish school? Why do fish school? We know some of that and we'll talk about it, but we're also going to talk about how do they form those massive groups of you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of fish that seem to move as one creature like this. All right, so I just want to show you guys this courtesy of uh, Black Tip H, which is a, a fishing setup out of Florida. But here is a annual mullet run, and this is shoals and schools of mullet fish off of the coast of Florida. You can see that's a giant aerial drone shot from the beach. And you can see the sharks are just swirling around in there. And they clear out the school. So how do fish know how to move in these rhythmic waves? I mean, how do they do that? And, and what's the reason they're doing that? Today, we're going to talk mostly about the actual science behind how they do that. And what, what forms those really beautiful and complex patterns so you've seen what these massive uh, swarms schools flocks of birds what they look like but in our own aquarium we see this from time to time too and to show you that let me show you uh, one more uh, classic that really illustrates uh, more shoaling behavior than schooling behavior so here is some more footage filmed by uh, Alex of Tank Tested, um, and I'm borrowing this off his channel, so uh, definitely check out his channel. It's, uh, he's an incredible cinematographer and uh, incredible work he's done for National Geographic and things. But here's over 600 neon tetras in a tank, just to show you, you know, how do they know to follow each other, to go in a circle like that? And you know, why do some fish stay so tight together and others kind of drift and some, you know, make these swerves and swirls and patterns. And when it's up close, it, it's seemingly random. They're all just kind of darting around. There's no particular leader. So what is going on? Well, we have an answer for you now. Ah, it's so cool to see. But the question remains, what's going on? Well, what if I were to tell you that what's going on is extremely simple, yet it creates an almost infinitely complex system? And what's going on is emergent intelligence or swarm intelligence, hive intelligence, schooling intelligence, flocking intelligence. Okay, I think you get it. But what's going on is these fish, these birds, ants, whatever it may be, they're following a few simple rules, maybe three, maybe four, and it produces this immensely complex patterning and system of movement that we see. So let's get into that. Let's talk about how you can change a school, how you can attract a school, why they school evolutionarily, and also how you guys can check out the ability to actually create this, model this on your own very easily, and uh, visit a website that I think is just really neat. So let's jump right in right now and talk about why it is that fish school and how they make the beautiful and complex patterns they do when they are schooling. So, I probably don't need to show you any more schools. I think you get the point. But, we're going to model some schools soon. But before we do that, we need to kind of discuss what is it about fish that causes them to school? Some school and some don't. Well, the main things are food, reproduction, and safety. In fact, those are kind of the only things. So, fish oftentimes need to go to where they're reproducing, and by the way, cool little tidbit about this video. You see the Beckford pencil fish, how it has three dark spots on it? That's because the lights were just off and they have a completely different pattern at night to throw off other 
uh, predators and other fish. So while they usually have a solid line down their side, at night they color up differently so that they can hide in the grass and so they have more of a tiger stripe pattern than a horizontal line pattern. Well why would they have a horizontal line pattern in the day? Well it's because they're a schooling fish and the reason they school is to confuse predators because the vision of predators is usually pretty good so they have to resort to doing tricks for the predator's vision. So, like these pencil fish here, like this very pregnant pencil fish here, um, the pencil fish will actually uh, get into large groups and they'll suddenly start to weave and bob and soon the lines on them start to confuse the vision of predators and the predators can't even tell that they're a different fish. They look like one organism or predators can't decide which one to go after. Now the same is true with these little danios. The little spots they have make them blend into the background of little rocks and things that are uh, on the bottom of their natural habitat. But also, they, most fish have scales and they reflect UV light and that UV light scatters when it's hit. And so when you have a fish that's shiny like this and it has disruptions in the UV where it's dark, it breaks up the pattern of the fish, just like, you know, a leopard hiding in the grass or just like, uh, you know, any sort of creature that has a pattern like a giraffe uh, and gazelle or baby deer have patterns so that they're not seen as well. Well, the reason that the fish school in the first place is is first and foremost, even your fish that are peaceful fish, they want to do it so that they can follow food and so that they can stay together and one, they're close to uh, other fish that they can then reproduce with if they need to, which, uh, you know, that's pretty much every organism in the natural world wants to be able to reproduce when they need to. And two, then they eat. But strategically, they've evolved the ability to form different shapes and different procedures in their shoaling, which would be this loose gathering like this, versus their schooling. So if I tap on the glass, a lot of times they'll tighten up. See, they kind of start going the same direction and doing the same things, following one another. And that natural instinct to follow, it's not like there's always one leader fish, especially in schools of thousands or millions. In fact, there are some simple rules that fish just want to follow any other fish that's near them that's of their species or type and that rule alone can keep them in a pattern that will stay tight-knit and then you add a few other rules and you can start to model really elaborate patterns of you know swelling waves going through your 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 school and different rippling effects and swirling effects but your fish they want to eat they want to eat the little microbes and the little plankton and whatever it is maybe it's smaller fish and when they're in a school they can move along and do that and they can also go to their spawning grounds or mating grounds and depending on the fish that looks different so I'm curious in the comments let me know what kind of fish you keep and if you've noticed you know some that school really tightly versus others that don't I think that, you know, rummy nose rasboras are one of the best schoolers uh, in my mind, and that probably is because they need to stay together. They have a lot of predators in their nat natural habitat, and, uh, you know, when you think about it, uh, the patterns they have, are do, they don't really have lines or dots on them that, that help break them up in that same way as a lot of other fish. So maybe schooling together tightly is an adaptation that works well for them. Whereas if you have spots, maybe you can split up and cruise through the, the greenery a little bit more. But like I was saying, all schooling fish have different, different methods of schooling. When they're really relaxed like these ones, they're not gonna school at all. They're not even gonna shoal. But you scare them or you startle them and they all split up and then they try to find places to hide if there's not a fellow fish nearby but if there is a fellow fish nearby boom they size up with them they get with them and you start seeing the species generally 
group with one another. So here we have, you know, four species, and they started to clump with one another. The ruby tetras went down with each other, the ember tetras did, and so did the uh, beautiful purple <laughs> rasboras there. Uh, and the glow light rasboras, for that matter, I only have three of them in here, and they all hop together. So predators have also started using schools because for everything that evolves as a defense mechanism, you know, evolution then changes and they try to evolve a way to use that to their advantage. So they'll try to feed by having two predators coming from different directions and, and uh, merging on the bait ball or on the school of fish. But what I want to show you is that these seemingly random movements of is the fish going right left like that they may be actually random but once they form up in a group we get what we call emergent intelligence like i was saying and it becomes a science that is predictable and you can actually map out the types of movement you would see and it actually you could overlay the computer models over the real fish based on just a few variables that are all based on the way they evolved. So let's go over that now, and it's a really cool program, so I hope you guys uh, try this out yourselves, and then maybe try to find fish in your tanks and think about the way they move, think about how close they stay to each other, if they go in the same direction or split up, and you know how closely they hang out when they're relaxed versus scared. Keep those things in mind, and now we're going to go model this, which I think is awesome. So let's go do that now. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about why animals, why fish in particular, would swarm or school or shoal, the difference between schooling and shoaling just being the density and uh, the direction of the fish and if they're, they're following each other's actions, Let's look at this cool software. Now, this software is actually getting pretty old, and it happens to be from 1986, and there is a algorithm that is being modeled here. This is all from one mathematical equation known as Boyd's algorithm, and this is a way to model swarms or flocks or schools. And in 1986, this this software was created from those rules and magically we saw that oh wow it only takes four variables to create an insane amount of complexity in a system of creatures and what seems like random chaos let's make this real random and chaotic in a moment here it only requires a little bit of tweaking to each of these rules. So soon you can get this just moving, buzzing all over chaos, right? But with a little tweak to one rule, you can get incredibly complex patterns. And like just like we saw with the mullet swimming and the sharks cutting through, it's these four rules that are at play with fish that are schooling. And Almost all schooling fish follow these four rules. So if you want this software, it's totally free, and it's available online, uh, like I said, at eater.net uh, forward slash Boyds, and you can play with it there. However, if you want more of the sources and info behind this video, uh, please consider signing up for the membership, and you'll get in the community tab all my research sources and any cool little things I come across like this when I'm making a video. Uh, plus it helps the channel keep going and it lets me uh, get info out to people for free about the aquarium hobby and the natural world. So as we're watching these fish swim back and forth, uh, what's going on? Well, we've got these rules and the first rule is coherence which is how closely the birds are flying to one another and that they're flying in the same direction, basically. So coherence is that each bird or fish, we're calling these Boyd's, remember, because it's Boyd's algorithm, uh, 
They don't just immediately fly direct at each directly at each other. They gradually steer towards each other at a rate that you can adjust. And that adjustment is called coherence. But they're trying to go to the same place. The school's trying to go feed together or trying to escape a predator together. So that's what you're seeing. And it's how much togetherness or how organized that togetherness is in, in meters and in time that you're seeing and how far they are from the other fish. So how far they are from the other fish is the second thing, which is separation. And when we play with this, we can put them all together so that they're right in one group, or we can splash it out so that they're separating quite a bit and they're feeding in different areas. Well, then a predator comes in and boom, they have to form up again. But if they can't see each other, they can't form up. So when we get down to number three, we start to see visual range too. So visual range is how far these little creatures or this modeling, these things can see from one another. And if you set that to zero, they go chaotic because they can't they can't follow one another because they can't see one another. But if they can see each other well, they can go really tightly. So you can tell a lot by how a school of fish is shoaling or moving uh, when they're scared or whatnot or when they're feeding. You can tell about their vision. You can tell about their speed. You can tell about their maneuverability. Uh, and... You can tell that because you would know that if they've got mediocre vision, the, the, the school looks a certain way. And now scientists are actually able to model these things. So the last thing that you can control here is the alignment. And basically that is just the, uh, the vector at which, and a vector is the speed and direction, uh, of each of these little boids or fish. Again, uh, you can control how quickly they try to match one another's speed. So they're all heading to the same place, so how quickly do they try to get in line and follow one another? But, like I said, we can make it so uh, there's almost no uh, alignment. They're, they're, they're not aligned and they're all going at different speeds. Or we can make it really organized. But when they're all going at different speeds, they kind of get lost. And because any fish can only see so far and gets distracted and whatnot, they start to lose track of one another. But we can turn down again the separation, and then when they do come near each other, they'll start to school up again. See that? They're starting to go together again. And if we put the coherence up, they'll start to school tightly again. But if we take and say, oh, but their vision is cut off, all of a sudden they'll start to drop off. See, they're, they're starting to get lost. And if they're not aligned at the same speed, they start to get all crazy and, and panicked. So you can create really cool models with this software. I encourage you guys to go on there and play with it. I, I do. So a link to this will be supplied uh, in the community tab for members to check out, or I listed the URL earlier. But um, you can pretty much mimic what those mullet were doing just by you know, playing with these things. And it is really, really fun because you can get this kind of thing going on and then all of a sudden, snap, boom, it's fireworks. <laughs> so in any case, I, I just wanted to show you guys, look at how beautiful nature is. And it's only three rules, really four, and three parameters. So it's the distance, it's the direction, and it's the speed at which these things are going on that you can form incredibly unique and elaborate patterns. So I just think this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so thanks guys for following me on this exploration of mathematics, emergent intelligence or emergent technology, uh, swarm technology, hive technology or intelligence all those terms are kind of interchangeable, but it's emergent intelligence or emergent uh, studies uh, is kind of what all of this falls under. So thanks for coming along and seeing that you made it through a math video and maybe math is kind of cool. 
not when you have to crunch all the numbers. There's more that goes into it to make those programs and so forth. But to just know that it's only a few things and cranking up that knob is the same as adding 10 instead of 5 to an existing equation or algorithm. The fact that we can model the natural world like that is really amazing. And it means that those fish are not having to individually think about, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. They only have to say, I'm going to stay four inches away from the other fish. I'm going to follow it and I'm going to try to get to the center of that school so I don't get eaten by sharks or whatever the case be, may be. Now, every species is going to have a different set of parameters. So what other parameters can you guys think of and do you think may impact how fish move? I'd like to hear that. And uh, the cool thing about that program is if you know what you're doing a little bit, which is actually really easy, it's very old video game slash computer uh, technology, you can add things like predators or you can uh, split it up into two groups, three groups, four groups, or you can change the speed, all sorts of different things. So I hope you guys had fun in this video today or at least found it interesting. And I thank you so much for spending your time with me. I will be back shortly with another video on the secret history living in your aquarium. This was Alex Williamson. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and uh, you'll get notified when there's new material out if you click that little bell. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. It does help get people to come by and watch the video. And hopefully we can all learn a little bit together. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.